regular scheduled meeting of the Kettering City Council. Today's date is August 8th, 2023. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please bow your head. Dear Lord, thank you for your abundant blessings in surrounding us with stewardship and a supportive community in Kettering. We thank you for the ability to engage in useful work and for the honor of bearing these important responsibilities. We are grateful for your boundless love for all of us. Please to con continue to give us the strength and compassion with which to serve and grant us the wisdom to make appropriate decisions. Help us remain humble and grateful for the opportunity to lead. Guide this council so that we may work in harmony while serving our citizens with integrity and purpose. Allow us to fulfill the responsibilities entrusted in us by our residents. I would like to recognize our Miami Valley Communication Council TV operator, Mike Sporoni. Mike, thanks for your assistance as usual. Uh, at this point, I would ask Mrs. Fisher for a motion to approve the minutes from the last council meeting. Your Honor, I have reviewed both the council minutes and the workshop minutes for July the 25th, and I do find them in order, and I move for their approval. Second. Okay, please call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepes? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Mr. Duke and Ms. Duval have excused absences this evening. Uh, we will now start with proclamations and special presentations, and we do have a special presentation this evening. Chief Protzman, our police chief, will be making that presentation, and this is a department introduction ceremony. Thus, all of you here. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. We appreciate you allowing us to do this tonight. Uh, I will ask Josh Wolf to step up front, please. So we are here tonight to uh, introduce Josh to you and to announce his promotion to Sergeant for the Kettering Police Department. Josh is a graduate of Valley, Valley View High School. He has an associate's degree from Miami University and he graduated the Sinclair Police Academy in 2010. Josh started his law enforcement career in 2011 with the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, where he served for six years before joining the Kettering Police Department. Since being with Kettering, Josh has served on numerous specialty teams, including the SWAT team, bike team, honor guard, accident investigation team, and our motor unit. And our motor unit is the person who rides the motorcycle and writes a lot of tickets. <laughs> and there are a lot of citizens right now that are glad to see Josh get promoted, I do believe. He did a great job at that. One of the, uh, as you know, one of our top priorities is to uh, control the traffic in Kettering to keep our uh, citizens safe, and we tasked Josh with that, and he did a fantastic job. Uh, Josh is here tonight with his wife, Kristen, and his two sons, uh, Kaizik and Wyatt. Uh, also are Josh's parents, Christy and Brian, and his grandparents, Garlinda and Gordon. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Kristen to step forward to pin the badge on Josh. So we've been fronting you a lot lately with the uh, amount of promotions that we're doing and hiring of new people. We are certainly a younger department. And I've told you before, and I think that this past week has shown you how great a people we have in this police department. I'm very, very proud of them. Uh, we are very um, 
excited to have people like Josh on board with us. And I know the citizens are very fortunate to have them well. So thank you very much for allowing us to do this. I'm gonna show you that our group is better than most and we're all gonna walk down to the basement quietly while council continues their meetings. Thank you, Mayor. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to let him speak at all. Huh? Okay. A little test. A little test. To see if they're quiet. Okay. We should have fought right when you put that badge on. We never do. Yeah, I know. It was a little awkward in the moment. Uh, I got I got ten dollars on it. Well, she needs to hit that buzzer. Okay, uh -huh. now that our numbers are down to more normal, <laughs> normal place, we'll move on um, with public hearings. And we do have a public hearing this evening. Tonight we have a public hearing on an application to rezone land at 4225 and 4235 Wilmington Pike to R4 Residential District. The Planning Commission recommended that the application be approved. The Planning Commission certification packet is made part of the record. First, city staff will make a presentation, then the applicant will have an opportunity to present. After those presentations, we will take comments for or against the application from those persons who are present tonight and wish to be heard. Comments will be limited to five minutes per person. Now I will open the public meeting. Any person that intends to speak to City Council tonight about this matter should stand, raise your right hand, and take the oath. Okay. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you present tonight before City Council is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say I do. Okay, please be seated. Okay. Ryan, we will now call on you to make the presentation for the city staff. Come on down, this is Ryan Holmesby. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Good evening, Council. This is a fairly straightforward request. Um, this particular property has been before Council, I think, three times uh, since 20, at least three times since 2013 for different rezonings. Um, none of those were approved um, because it didn't comply with our uh, rezon our it didn't comply with the zoning code requirements to allow a positive recommendation for approval. Uh, but the request tonight is different. Um, it involves the property at 4225 and 4235 Wilmington Pike. It's kind of southwest of the split of Woodman and Wilmington, uh, Woodman Drive and Wilmington Pike. It's just south of the El Rancho Grande. And then uh, Woodman Drive and Wilmington Pike are to the east and then to the south and west. There's uh, single family residential neighborhoods. It's one of the last properties along Wilmington Pike that hasn't developed. Uh, I believe in 2012 there were a couple buildings on the property, one of which I think was the original model for that neighborhood as it was being built back in, I think, the 1950s. Uh, so those, those buildings were demolished in, I think, 2012, and it's been vacant ever since. Um, right now, most of the property is already zoned R4. That's kind of that olive green type color on the map there. There's a little sliver on the kind of the south side of the property that's zoned R1 that you can't really see, and then there's a little triangle uh, on the northern side that's zoned BP or business park, which is our industrial uh, zoning district. And the request tonight is really just to take the, that sliver of R1 and the triangle of uh, uh, the BP portion of the property and just zone, rezone all of it to R4. And at the Planning Commission public hearing on July 17th, um, they, they, had, they held their public hearing on this item, and at that meeting they recommended that the rezoning be approved because they made a determination that the request complied with the applicable requirements of the Kettering Zoning Code when it comes to rezonings. Uh, now, in Section 1153.12.8 of the Zoning Code, which deals with the role of City Council in rezonings, 
There's seven factors that come into play. Um, no single factor is controlling. Each must be weighed in relation to the other standards. A lot of these, in this case, since it's really just correcting a couple small error, like a, a small sliver of R1 and a little triangle of BP, there's really only a few of these factors that really come into play. Um, and one of those is factor one, which the, the rezoning or classification shall be consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan or any other plan. And this portion of the city is a little bit complicated on our, on our comprehensive plan. We have our future land use map. Uh, in that case, this area is shown as being sub-regional commercial, which would allow kind of you'd expect that in the, uh, to be zoned for B and allow kind of a wide range of retail, civic, and office uses. However, there's also a section of the comprehensive plan that deals with redevelopment area concepts. And this, this portion of the comprehensive plan really honed down into some of the focus areas of the city at the time that the plan was adopted. And that included the Wilmington Pike Corridor. And as a part of that um, portion of the comprehensive plan, the comprehensive plan stated that commercial uses should be concentrated on the, on the Wilmington corridor near the major intersections of Stroop and, and Wilmington and Dorothy in Wilmington. And in between, you can have a mixture of office and residential uses. And also, kind of hard to see, I can't even read it, but that bubble right there specifically says that high density residential should be focused on the south side of the Wilmington Woodman split. Uh, and this request would be consistent with that. Um, portion of the comprehensive plan. Um, factor two, adverse, uh, is meant to make sure that the rezoning wouldn't have an adverse impact on neighboring lands. As the initial, uh, some of the initial maps showed, most of the property is already zoned R4. It's really collect, correcting a few small portions of the property that aren't in that zoning area. So there's really not going to be a major change in what uses are permitted if this gets approved versus what's permitted on the property today. Um, and if, uh, factor three, the suitability of the, of the land is presently zoned. As I said, there's some, this rezoning is really correcting um, that little sliver of R1 and the triangle of BP. So most of the property is already zoned in the district that the applicant is requesting the whole property be rezoned to. Um, and that's kind of highlighted here, that Isle of Green, orangish color is the R4 portion of the property. Um, health safety. Factor four is meant to ensure that the uh, ordinance bears a substantial relation, relationship to the public health, safety, and morals, or the general welfare. And uh, we believe that this rezoning does, because again, it's not really changing what's permitted on the property today, and it is co consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, public policy, um, this is meant to ensure that uh, the rezoning, that certain public policies in favor of the rezoning may be considered. Um, in this case, you're really just talking about the comprehensive plan, and uh, this particular rezoning is consistent with that plan. Uh, factor six isn't terribly cons uh, applicable to this request. City Council shall consider the size, shape, and characteristics of the tract in relation to the affected neighboring lands. Um, this rezoning really won't affect the neighboring lands much at all, uh, so this factor is not terribly uh, applicable to this request and then factor seven is whether there's any other factor any other factor may be considered that the that council deems relevant to the rezoning uh, we couldn't think of any while, while reviewing this but if any come up later i'd be happy to answer any questions about them so again the Plan planning commission held their public hearing on this item on july 17th uh, at that meeting um, they made a finding that the evidence supports the requested rezoning from r1 r4 and bp just to all r4 and they recommended approval and with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? I, I've got one, Ryan. Uh, at that public hearing with the Planning Commission, was there any comments from uh, the, the, uh, the applicant or the, the anyone opposed or any, anything uh, no, that said there? Is this going to be? No, no one spoke at that meeting, including the applicant. Uh, actually, no one was there, <laughs> so there were no comments. Okay. Um, I got one phone call when the letters went out from the neighbor directly to the south, that bigger property on Wil on Wilmington, just asking for some que just asking for questions. The letter that goes out isn't it tells you what's going on, but they had some follow up questions. We answered those questions, and they didn't seem to have any objections, and they didn't show up at the meeting. Okay. So. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, 
I would assume since no one stood up to be sworn in that there's no one applicant present wishes to speak. Okay. Um, at this point, then we will take any comments by the public. Once again, no one stood up to speak, to be sworn in, so I assume there is not anyone. However, um, it is my duty to say that it's time for public comments. Public comments will be limited to five minutes per person. Each person may speak only once. Please do not repeat material that has already been covered. Before you begin, please state your name and address and that you took the oath or we would give it to you at that point. Okay. Is there anyone here in favor of the amendments that wishes to speak? Is there anyone opposed to the amendments? Okay, if not, I um, guess there's no point in asking city staff to respond. <laughs> so it makes it pretty simple. At this point, I will close the public hearing. The hearing is now closed. City Council will consider legislation regarding this matter at a future meeting. Okay. Now move to ordinances in second reading. Okay. Okay, is there any public comment on any of the legislation that we are dealing with here tonight? Anyone wishing to speak before Council with comments or new information about the legislation? Move on tonight's agenda may do so at this time. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Speaker must state their name and address. Comment should be addressed to council. If you have comments that are not about the legislation on tonight's agenda, there will be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the meeting. Okay, Mr. Abernathy, would you like uh, to proceed? My name is Sterling Abernathy. <clears throat> I have comments on agenda item number four it's a resolution to approve landscaping for the Rosewood Arts Center. The cost is $133,000. The landscaping is part of the Rosewood renovation project according to this report, uh, which the city issued last week. The total Rosewood project cost design and construction is estimated to be $6.6 .6 million. That's $1.6 million more than the $5 million total project cost estimated when the project was first approved in early 2020. Here's what I've learned from reading the Rosewood landscape plans. First, the cost of the landscape project is being understated tonight. The $133,000 does not include the cost of designing the plan, which is $15,000. So adding the design cost makes the actual total project cost $148,000. The landscaping is planned along the front of the building and two beds by the parking lot. This the planning area is about uh, seven-tenths of an acre. In this relatively small planning area, the following plant material will be installed. 33 trees, 126 shrubs, 305 perennials and ornamental grasses. Just in case those 464 plants aren't enough, the design for phase two has been completed, which adds another 167 plants and trees that cost $39,000 more. To, to keep the 464 plants healthy, the plan has an irrigation system. The irrigation system has 16 remote control zones and 191 sprinkler heads. The total flow rate of the irrigation system is 268 gallons per minute. Running the entire system for an hour will use 16,000 gallons of water. In case that isn't enough water, the irrigation plan for phase two expands the system to 19 zones and 243 sprinkler heads, providing 20,000 gallons an hour. Is this plan an example of sustaining of sustainable landscaping? Has the plan been reviewed by the uh, Sustainability Committee? In addition to the $133,000 you're approving tonight and the $39,000 for phase two, the estimate adds uh, $44,000 of future landscape spending, including 28 more trees, raised planters, annuals, and a windbreak. We're likely to see this $83,000 included in future city budgets. 
There are two other Rosewood spending items funded outside the renovation project. One is a mural on the building wall, uh, which costs $35,000. The other is a uh, public art project uh, which has uh, two atomic mushroom cloud figures costing $55,000. Do you honestly believe that most Kettering residents uh, want their tax dollars used to fund these Rosewood items? These items increase the actual capital spending on Rosewood to $6.8 million, even after reductions from the state grant and private donations. Kettering taxpayers will still be on the hook for $5.3 million for Rosewood. Over half the people who use Rosewood do not live, work, or pay taxes in Kettering. How about reducing the scope of this extravagant landscape plan to start saving money for needs like replacing the city's 50-year-old stormwater sewer system, which staff described as crumbling six years ago, and reconstructing residential streets? Even a part of the $5 million being spent on Rosewood could benefit many more Kettering taxpayers, and it would reduce the need for new taxes, such as stormwater utility fees and the street levy taxes discussed at the Council workshop on long-range needs six years ago. Tonight, a good way to, to start is to reject this Ro Rosewood landscape plan and have staff develop a low-cost, sustainable option. Your Honor, I do have an ordinance to rezone 2119 East Dorothy Lane from Economic Development Overlay District Number 14 to B Business District. That is the Planning Commission Case Number PC 23-013. It is requested by Planning and Development Department, and I move for approval. Second. <clears throat> okay. Um, call the roll. No, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Holmesby, where do you go? I believe I'll, I'll handle this one. Okay, and, all right. Um, he had to go. Um, this ordinance rezones 2119 East Dorothy Lane uh, from e, what we call EDO, Economic Development Overlay, uh, to Business District. Um, uh, as you know, some of our uh, EDOs or Economic Development Overlays, we, we believe it's desirable to phase some of them out where where those uh, particular districts are no longer needed as a result of updates that were made to the zoning code um, a few years ago. Um, we believe that doing so will uh, help facilitate the redevelopment and, uh, and accommodate the expedient, efficient, fair, uniform application of the zoning code for the subject property. Um, the property at that address, uh, just for uh, reference, is a, a vacant uh, building uh, that formerly housed Aaron Rents, um, and uh, we're looking forward to its redevelopment. Okay, anyone have any questions for Mr. Greeson? Okay, call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. <clears throat> okay, we now move on to resolutions. Um, that would be at me. Yep. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a resolution this evening authorizing the city manager to accept a grant from the Ohio Arts Council. The estimated cost is $34,098. That will be in the 2024 budget. It's requested by Parks, Recreation, and Culture Arts Department. I move for approval. Second. Okay, Mr. Greeson, do you have any further information? <laughs> yes, uh, a couple things. Um, we're uh, grateful to the Ohio Arts Council to, for uh, them granting uh, the Rosewood Arts uh, Center what's called a sustainability funding 
um, uh, for fiscal year 2024. The grant cycle is actually a four-year term, um, and then we'll annually report, and the amount that we receive each year will be, be determined annually. So in 2024, we're going to get $34,098. Um, those dollars will be allocated, uh, or I should say they'll be used for general operating support for Rosewood Art Center programs, uh, things like uh, multi-arts classes, special events, the Rosewood Gallery, uh, the Children's Theater, and Art on the Commons. Be glad to answer any questions that you may have, Your Honor, okay. and members of council. Anyone have any questions? Okay, hearing none, call the roll. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to use competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for the Rosewood Art Center landscape project. This is being requested by Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts. The estimated cost is $133,546. The amount available is the same, and I move for approval. Second. If it's been moved and seconded, Mr. Greeson. Yes, uh, Your Honor, uh, members of council, this project consists of landscaping, hardscaping, and the option for irrigation installation to complete um, <clears throat> the renovation of the exterior of the Rosewood Arts Center. Um, the irrigation option to be approved based on funding. Um, this uh, project is being funded um, out of the of underspending that we've identified, uh, things that we're not going to complete out of the Parks, Recreation, Cultural Arts uh, Department. Um, those particular things are $75,000 uh, in irrigation uh, that we're reallocating the funds towards it from an irrigation project to this project to do it, to complete it. Uh, $39,230 from fencing that we're not going to perform uh, and $19,316 that come from a Kettering Parks Foundation donation uh, to the project. Um, be glad to answer any questions that you may have and um, we recommend approval. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes, with reservations. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager I'm sorry, to authoring acceptance of a donation from Kettering Parks Foundation for the Rosewood Arts Center Landscape Project. Estimated cost is $19,316 and is requested by Parks and Recreation and Cultural Arts Department. I move for approval. Second. Okay. Mr. Grayson. Yes. Uh, the project you just approved, the landscaping at the Rosewood Arts Center, uh, we're fortunate enough to have a donation for that from the Kettering Parks Foundation who has uh, supported uh, a number of the phases of this project. It's 19,316, as was mentioned, um, and it helps uh, supplement the, and, uh, and address the costs associated with the landscape, landscaping. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions, Mr. Grayson? Okay, here now, call the roll. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Mayor Lehner. Yes. I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to use competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for the repair and renovation of asphalt paths at the Indian Riffle Park. The estimated cost and budget are both $75,000 requested by Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Department. And I move for approval. Second. Okay. Mr. Bergstresser. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as mentioned, this resolution will allow the city to use competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for the repair and renovation of various asphalt, asphalt paths within Indian Riffle Park. Um, in addition to the repairs, uh, we also will, will include some path extensions, resurfacing, and other uh, miscellaneous improvements um, within the park. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? 
Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city of Kettering to become a power, clean, future Ohio community and to adopt the goal to reduce greenhouse gas, gas emissions in the city. It is requested by the Sustainability Committee, and I see one of their key members is here tonight, Mr. Ron Klink, welcome. And I uh, move for approval. Second. Okay, Mr. Bergstresser. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as Mr. Kleepass mentioned, this is a recommendation that is coming out of our newly formed uh, Sustainability Committee. Uh, they've been uh, hard at work over the last year or so, um, working to uh, start developing sustainability plans for the city. Uh, one of the recommendations after uh, hearing a presentation from Power Clean Future Ohio uh, is that the city would become a Power Clean Future Ohio community uh, with an, a number of other communities around the state. Uh, this is essentially is a consortium uh, that uh, we will work with uh, they are experts in seeking ways to reduce energy usage, uh, decrease carbon emissions, and uh, ultimately find ways to become a more resilient community. Uh, we think it's a great group to join, and uh, upon your approval this evening, uh, we will look forward to working with them. Be happy to be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Seeing none, call the roll. Mr. Kleepass. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. I have a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the city of Kettering, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023. This is being requested by the Finance Department. The estimated cost is $39,416 net transfer, and the amount budgeted is zero. Okay, Mr. Greeson. Okay. Yes, Your Honor, I'm going to ask. Yeah. Uh, no. No, 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 it's first. No. I move for approval. Okay. Second. Okay. Now, Mr. Greeson. Yes, um, Your Honor, uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Bergstresser to address the first piece of this, which is the supplemental appropriation for um, traffic controls. Uh, thank you. Um, the first is in relation to um, several traffic signal replacement projects that are currently under construction, uh, specifically at Stroop and Southern, uh, Marshall and Wilmington, Bigger and East David, and Patterson and Rembrandt. These are all, with the exception of Stroop and Southern, the rest of them are all federally funded projects uh, through MVRPC. Uh, we're requesting a supplemental appropriation of uh, $20,100 for new electric services for these signals. Uh, this is something uh, new that uh, AES Ohio is charging uh, for traffic signal replacement program or projects. So in the future, uh, these costs will be uh, incorporated into the individual project budgets. However, uh, we were informed recently that we would have to pay for these, uh, and so that's why tonight we're requesting the additional money uh, to do so that we can actually turn these signals on once they are uh, installed. So that is the first piece. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Greeson. Uh, the second piece uh, relates to the uh, Kettering Parks Foundation grant that you just approved. Uh, by You adopted accepting it. We now have to appropriate uh, those funds for use for the landscaping project that we described. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Kleepass. Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Okay. We'll now move on to ordinances and first reading. There are no ordinances tonight. Um, we'll move to certifications and petitions, and I would call on Ms. Kaczynski. Do you have any certifications or petitions this evening? Your Honor, we do not have any certifications or petitions this evening. Okay, thank you. We'll then move to the city manager's report and community update. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, want to highlight a few things. Uh, if you haven't driven down Wilmington Pike lately, you'll notice it's being resurfaced. It's a great project. It's underway uh, and work has begun between East Stroop and Beaverton Drive. Uh, traffic's going to be reduced to one lane in each direction now through the, uh, August uh, during this uh, very important and necessary road improvement project. Um, you may, you may have heard uh, the Kettering Connection is uh, open Thursdays from 8 to 11 a.m. for blood pressure screenings. 
um, and information inside the phrase fanfare. This is a kind of a partnership between phrase and the Kettering connection from eight to 11 once a week um, on Thursdays uh, at the fanfare store in town and country. If you have any questions about that, certainly uh, residents can contact our senior services coordinator, Natalie Storms uh, at the number on the screen. Don't miss the last community hot dog roast, um, August 9th, so uh, uh, this week. Uh, it'll be at the Kettering Recreation Complex, and I think, once again, will be a popular event for uh, residents to attend. I want to note again that um, we have a, a new award, a Good Neighbor Award, and our family of awards. Um, the Good Neighbor Award will recognize neighbors whose efforts, both large and small, make their neighborhood and Kettering uh, a better place to live. So if you have somebody that you think is really an exceptional neighbor, uh, makes your neighborhood a uh, better um, place to live, please uh, nominate them. Uh, you can find information out about that at KetteringOH.org slash GoodNeighborAward. We've noted in recent weeks um, that after August 18th, uh, no new applications will be accepted for our stay put emergency rental assistance program as funding for uh, this uh, important and impactful program uh, is running out. Um, details about uh, that uh, are on the screen um, and certainly you can contact our staff um, for any questions. Um, or look at KetteringOH.org. The ever popular Shred Day is coming on October 21st. So gather up your documents uh, at, at the Fairmont High School parking lot um, at 3301 Schroyer Road. Uh, people will be able to bring their uh, documents uh, to be shredded. Your Honor, that's all I have, and we appreciate your time this evening. Okay. Thank you very much. May I, can I ask? Yes. Mm -hmm. Matt, we had a, a large amount of people that signed a petition about blood pressure screening over at the town mm -hmm. and country. Were you able to get a hold of those folks and let them know that we think we've reached a suitable conclusion for them to their issue? Yeah, I think we had our first screening, uh, blood pressure screening clinic last week, and a number of people who were here uh, to address you attended that, or some of them did. So I believe um, Ms. Storms was able to reach them and some of the frequent attendees uh, were able to join her at the fanfare. Great. Th thanks for the follow-up on that. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, if you would like to come speak before City Council, please come down to the podium. Each speaker will have a five-minute limit. Speakers are asked to state their name and address. Is there anyone who would like to speak before City Council? Um, maybe one of the bird stressors would have something to say. There you go. <laughs> you want to come down? We have one ready. You can come down. <laughs> come on down. <laughs> ah, your brother's a lot beat of you to it. Okay. Can you reach the microphone? He's got it. Oh, okay, great. Okay, what's your name? Henry Bird Stresser. What is your address? So it's at Stanbridge Drive. Okay, and what would you like to tell us? I would like to put an amusement park in, in, in the rec center. An amusement park? Mm -hmm. The rec center. The rec center, okay. Kind of like Adventure Reef? Mm, yeah, I guess. Okay, except <laughs> not in the water. Huh? Yeah, not really. Okay. More, more like I'm a land roller coaster. Mm, okay. How much do you think that would cost? Mm, Ten dollars or millions of dollars? Millions. Millions of dollars. I'm just, I was just thinking of putting one roller coaster in. One so. roller coaster? Okay. One roller coaster. Well, I think it's an awesome idea. I'm not sure we've got the money for it, but I know someone I might talk to about it, find out how much he thinks right. it would cost. Okay? That's right. what I was going to... You know who that would be? <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate your input. I was going to suggest if you know someone that's a city engineer, you might talk to that person about the cost. You might have an inside <laughs> opinion of that. 
Okay. Anybody else Thank have you. any questions for Mr. Bergstresser here? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Okay. See none. Thank you very much for your input. Thank you, Henry. And you never know. Maybe someday your children will ride that roller coaster. That's right. Spark okay. Kettering. There's an idea. Yeah. That's excellent. <laughs> okay. Thanks. That's in January. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we will now, um, let's see, it threw guess. me off. Um, yeah. Council reports. Yeah, top that one. I know, it's going to be hard to top. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who wished to speak tonight? Okay, see none. They've had multiple opportunities. <laughs> Okay, um, council reports. Would start? you start with Mrs. That'd Fisher? Be great. So um, I want to remind everybody. So with Shred Day, it's very similar to the Styrofoam collection we just did, and so I would just remind residents that these events are annual, and so as you get your Amazon packaging, etc., put your Styrofoam in a bucket in the basement, so that way you can bring it on the Styrofoam recycling, which is what happened in the last couple of weeks, which was awesome. Um, also, I want to uplift that um, Don and Nick for a great Youth Appreciation Day. They uh, brought in our youth, um, served ice cream with sprinkles, um, and thanked them for their donation of time to our city. And so we have not only some of us that might be on the older side, <laughs> but we have some younger, younger folks that are um, very consistent volunteers and very enthusiastic about what they do for our city. Mm -hmm. Last but certainly not least, um, I did attend the employee, um, employee picnic would be my words. Excellent, excellent. Um, a lot of guys wearing green were throwing balls to knock in the city manager in the water. <laughs> I might have contributed a little bit and there's other people in this room that might have contributed a little bit because our arms were not as good as the guys that wore the green shirts. Um, what a great um, time though. It was awesome to see all the different types of workers that we have and how they all intermingle. Um, it was good until fire department had to leave and you know those, those kinds of things happen. But um, great event and, and so I uplift the city and really it was the city um, council, our council that put that together which was awesome. Employee oh. council. Employee council, yeah. thank you ma'am. Not us. <laughs> Okay. okay, Mr. Klepatz. Thanks, Your Honor. Um, I, I wanted to mention that tonight we had a couple items on the agenda that had to do with Rosewood and, uh, and landscaping at, uh, at Rosewood. Uh, but on the 28th, um, several of us were able to attend uh, an annual fundraiser that the Parks Foundation does have. It's called Party in the Park, where they do raise money for the Parks Foundation. And tonight was an example of some of the funds that the Park Foundation raises coming right back to helping with the landscaping, for example, at, at Rosewood. Um, so I'm, I want to give a little shout out to the Parks Foundation for the work they do for us. Uh, also, I want to mention uh, for the Chiefs that uh, National Night Out uh, was another nice, nice event, nice success, good weather, and coupled with the fact that there was a pretty big crowd coming to the phrase. I think uh, traffic control worked out and uh, all the planning that took place. Um, Bob may mention that uh, Kids Day in the Park, and all I want to mention it, with Kids Day in the Park and with uh, the night out, um, Skyline Chili is both places uh, providing, uh, you know, we talk about hot dog events and what have you. We're going to be called the hot dog capital of the world here. One of these but, you know, thanks a lot to the Skyline Chili folks for the support that they give to, to our city. And then last, talking about small business, put your money where your heart and your home is, shop catering. That's all I have. Thank you. Mrs. Saul. Thank you. Um, my uh, family and I just got back from a trip to Macedonia, and so unfortunately I missed some of the things that um, everyone went to. And Macedonia is a small country, one of the poorer countries in Europe, uh, where my husband and I lived for a while as missionaries. And um, people in the village we lived in make an average of about $300 a month. So it was a good exposure for our kids and for our kids to see where we used to live. But we were very happy to get back. And I think one of the best things is just 
realizing how blessed we are to live in a city like Kettering. And despite our problems in this country, we really have a lot going for us. And I'm grateful to live here and in Kettering with a city that has order and rule of law and just appreciate being back here. Um, I also want to mention Art on the Commons is this weekend on Sunday. It's the 35th anniversary of Art on the Commons with the um, national award-winning Rosewood Art Center, Kettering's Arts Center. And there's 104 artists this year at Lincoln Park starting at 11 o'clock. I'll be there and hope to see lots of people there. And um, by the time we meet again, it will school will have started. So summer is coming to an end for some of us and just hope we can get out and enjoy the parks for things like this. And um, just glad for all the parks and great outdoor activities we have here in Kettering to enjoy the end of the summer. That's it for me. Thank you very much, Mr. Scott. A couple of things for me this evening. First of all, um, it goes without saying, but I want to say job well done to our police department. They've had some tri cir trying circumstances lately, and you know, Kettering's finest is not just a handle. I think it's true. Um, add on to what Tony said about Kids Day in the park this past Saturday at Delco. There were 600 plus kids there uh, that attended. That's well well done uh, by the various clubs in the air for putting that on. Um, I like to talk about new buildings that are going up in Kettering, but sometimes before you can build something, you've got to tear something down. And I notice there's been more than a few eyesores that have been in Kettering for years that have had attention to them, and I think our residents appreciate finally seeing some movement. Even if it goes from a decrepit building to a flat parcel of land, it shows some kind of progress. And lastly, a week ago this past Saturday, I had the pleasure to attend the first annual Melrose Avenue Art Festival in my old neighborhood where I grew up as a, as a boy. And a little bit about that neighborhood. Um, most of those houses were built in the 1930s and the 1940s when most of Kettering was fields or woods. And these are starter homes, and they were all built, like I said earlier, before the post-war building boom. And that particular neighborhood has, has been revitalized by the residents. Uh, they're mostly younger people with school-aged children. And the sense of neighborhood I had on that street was, was something to behold. They, they truly care about each other, and they're very close-knit. And I, I think it's an example for what things can be, not what they are sometimes. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you uh, very much for those comments. And um, I was going to raise up the Melrose Art um, Project as well. It was just, it was really neat just to see a, a woman and some of her friends and neighbors um, put some of the art that they've been doing, not only on sale, but arts and crafts tables out for their neighborhood kids to come and, and just enjoy. And I thought, you know, that is just really cool. They were having some shaky moments right now as a neighborhood, and rather than, than fight and argue about it, they took it into their own hands to uh, create a real neighborhood um, through that event. And uh, so I think that was really cool. The other incident I saw this month of citizen action that works to make us a better community were the, was the response of the, the elderly people who walk at, down the country on a regular basis. And um, they were losing something that had been very um, precious to them, which was the ability to get their blood pressure checked when they went there to walk. And rather than get angry and come in here and holler and scream, they got together and they put a petition together and they asked us, please, could we somehow um, keep the blood pressure service? And within a week's time, the city figured out a way to do it. And they're over there now on Thursdays taking blood pressures like crazy. So um, this is the kind of thing that makes Kettering unique and, and really neat. So I was proud, of, proud to call myself um, a resident of Kettering this week. With that, I think with no further business to come before us um, at this point, we will uh, adjourn and our next meeting will be, why can I never find that? The 22nd of August. <laughs>